The Solomon's Bee Cross is a great trail and in particular obstacle course running shoe. In this video, we're going to cover a long-term review of the Speed Cross 3, as well as cover the updates that came in the Speed Cross 4. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of this shoe, how to get the most out of the shoe, and whether or not it's the right shoe for you. So let's get to it. Now, believe it or not, I've used the same pair of shoes for two Spartan Sprints, two Spartan Supers, Rugged Maniac, a Savage Race, and a Battle Frog, and they still look this good. Now, this probably isn't the recommended solid cleaning method, but I simply wash them off with the hose after the race, throw them in a bag, come back home, do another rinse, and then throw them in the washing machine on gentle. And they come out looking this good after five years in all those races. And as a matter of fact, the Solomon Speed Cross 4 is even more durable than the 3. So in my opinion, they stood the test of time, and they performed very well for that. And one of the reasons why I picked these shoes and why they're so popular it's because of this very aggressive lug pattern and the ability of these shoes to grip on wet and slippery surfaces. So we're going to cover all this stuff more here shortly. So I'm going to include some links in the description for these shoes as well as some shoes from other competing manufacturers. So there are shoes from Reebok, for instance, Innovate, or Saucony that you might want to look at. They also have some really great shoes. Uh, I know I chose these shoes, but they also have some interesting shoes as well. You guys can check those out. Check out the features and the pricing. The link's in the description below. Now, these shoes are available at Amazon, but in particular, I like Roadrunner Sports, and there's a couple reasons for that. They have people who you can chat with online, and they're going to help you get a, the best fit for the shoe. They also have a 60-day return period for shoes that are new for any shoe, and they have a 40-day period where you can even wear these shoes, do whatever you want, and if you don't like them, you can exchange them for 40 days. Or if you get the VIP membership, then you can exchange them for a 90-day period, and you also get 10% off of merchandise. So it's really a pretty good website, but... I'll leave it up to you guys. I'll drop some links down below for a couple of different websites you can pick these up. They also do have the wide width as well at Roadrunner Sports and the Solomon. So a lot of people say that the Solomon Speed Cross 4 is a little bit narrow. There is a wide width available and they do have that at Roadrunner Sports as well. Now, if you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell so you get notified of future videos. Check out all my social media sites and uh, let's check out some more stuff about this shoe. All right, so what's the difference between a Speed Cross 3 and a Speed Cross 4? So there's a couple things. They are very similar. But the drop, meaning the heel to toe height, has been lowered from 11 millimeters to 10 millimeters on the Speed Cross 4. You probably see a lot of different reports on that, but according to the Solomon website, the drop on the Speed Cross 4 is 10 millimeters. Also on the 4, they did a different lug pattern, so there's more coverage, about 22% more coverage on the lugs in the bottom. And they also took these side lugs, which do tend to tear a little bit. i got to be honest, I'm going to have glued a couple of these. They've actually moved these in or changed the lug pattern. We were only going to get full lugs on the bottom of the Speed Cross 4 instead of these partial lugs that kind of be, tend to be a little more easy to tear off. They've also hardened the compound of the sole a little bit, but it still has that wet traction contra grip. And they have a little bit more of an open kind of ankle. People do say that the Solomon Speed Cross 4 fits a little bit more narrow than a Speed Cross 3. Um, these Speed Cross 3 have been no problem for me. I have like a medium sized foot, not super wide. But as I said, they do make the Speed Cross 4 in a wide version as well. So if you get them or you think that you have wide feet, you want to check it out. I'd probably recommend going with the Speed Cross 4 in a wide foot. I have a size 11.5 in the Speed Cross 3, which is my normal size shoe. And they fit for me pretty firmly. So I'd recommend if you're getting the 3s, go with your normal size. If you're getting the 4s, you may want to size up by a half size if you're going to go you know, with that normal width. Um, but overall, they fit pretty true to size. All right, so let's talk about some of the features of this shoe. In addition, I'll kind of throw some pros and cons at you while we're talking about that. So first of all, starting out, they had this wet traction contra grip sole. So it's going to be really great at gripping things, you know, that are wet. So if you're going over rocks, you're going over uh, moss, you're going over mud especially, um, it has a, you know, a not super hard outsole. It allows it to grip things and it also has these kind of big lugs, this like chevron feature. It's going to allow it to grip into stuff. And additionally, that's continued up front as well. So if you're going up a hill... It's also going to have the ability to grip into that. So I see a lot of people, you know, they're in Spartan races or other races, especially on hills where they're, you know, maybe going down a hill or something and they're sliding all over the place, falling on their butt, or they're even like carrying a log or something and they're trying to go down a hill and you fall and then it's like super embarrassing and it's also um, painful as well. So these shoes, I mean, I'm not saying they will never slide, but they're definitely among the best in terms of, you know, just really heavy mud and that kind of stuff. They also have a very open design on the bottom as well. So a lot of shoes, you know, traditional shoes, 
they'll have kind of a very closed system, a lot of kind of nooks and crannies where a lot of dirt can get in there and it's very hard to get that dirt out. On well, this shoe, it has a very, you know, open lug pattern. So in general, you know, mud's gonna be able to go there. It'll stick in the mud. And then when you run, you know, it'll either just fall out or it'll dry and fall out and that kind of stuff. And it's able to maintain a pretty open traction pattern, which allows the shoe to grip better over a period of time. As far as the drop goes here, like we said in the Speed Cross 4, it's going to be a 10 millimeter drop and a Speed Cross 3 and 11 millimeter drop. And then they have this EVA midsole. So it's just a big amount of cushion. There is a lot of cushion here in general throughout the shoe. So if you want a very super light, simple, nimble, like low drop shoe, then these are not the shoe for you. But if you're gonna be racing in lots of mud, lots of rocks, and you want your foot to be protected and well cushioned, these are a great shoe for that. So there's tons of cushion in through here. It's very squishy in through here, but yet it doesn't feel like it's shifting around a lot. Um, it grips the foot really well. And that kind of continues throughout the entire shoe. Also, it's been very durable back in here as well in the heel. I have a lot of like traditional running shoes that I use and the heel will really wear out and wear through material. Um, on these shoes, I've had no problem with that either. Won them for several races, as you can tell, and um, I have no problem with the shoe being worn out there. When you're going down hills, they had this lightweight muscle, they call it, or um, this EVA foam kind of midsole that continues, and it's very thick here. So it's gonna provide a lot of cushion um, going downhill from rocks and that kind of stuff, and on your body as well. And it's also going to keep the shoe relatively light as well. And that continues to here as well. Now it's going to be much thinner up front, um, but as general, there's a fair amount of cushion as well throughout the entire midsole. Now one thing about the insole is this ortholite insole. It's well cushioned. It's a nice insole and it's held up very well. But I did notice when I took these out running the first time in a race that going downhill, the insole really slid around a lot. So it's kind of moving all around and scrunching down at the bottom. Um, and it really drove me nuts. So when I got back, the first thing I did was try to look for a solution to that. And kind of a very simple solution, it's a couple bucks, I'll link this down below as well, is this uh, marine goop. And I just kind of lathered this all inside the bottom of the shoe and the insole, stuck it in there, and then I've worn these through several races, I put them in the wash, and that insole is like in there, like 100%, it's not going anywhere. Um, so it is kind of a permanent solution, but the insole is held up really well. Um, you can't exchange it, but I don't imagine exchanging it through any point, probably by the time that's worn through you're just gonna to need to get a new pair of shoes. So it's held up really well. Then also here in terms of the tongue up front, the tongue is a pretty mobile tongue, which does allow it some movement, which is nice. However, there is a place there for rocks and stuff to get in up here up top. So I kind of almost prefer that the tongue be sewn into the top. But again, having that movement does allow some freedom of the ankle and some adaptability in the shoe as well. It is anchored in by this strap right here, which goes down to the shoe. And there is some mesh material here as well on the front um, that kind of keeps you know water and debris and stuff from going into the shoe there. And then of course there's this quick lace system. This is really cool. This is kind of exclusive to Solomon as far as I know. I don't know if it's patented, but you know you can keep this open and then you just pull this and it's gonna tighten all the laces, you know, very dynamically and kind of all together. So it's super quick, first of all, and it's also very convenient. You can do this even with gloves on. And then you simply just, you know, take this. There's a lot of lace right now, but you'll just put this up inside of the, uh, the tongue of the shoe and it holds it in place. So it has it all there and it just keeps this in. And this hasn't fallen out for me while I'm running or anything. Um, Cause you're also putting some pressure against that with your with your foot as well. Um, you don't really feel it or anything on the inside. It just holds it really well. Um, and it's a super quick and easy way to type these shoes if you need to adjust them. Then continuing on, this has a water resistant textile throughout the shoe. This shoe is not the best shoe for draining, for sure. There's not really any built-in drainage ports or anything. Um, the water can kind of come through the shoe and all that, but it's definitely not gonna be the best shoe for draining. I haven't really found it to be a problem for me, um, but definitely they do retain a bit of water. A solution for that that I have is these socks here. And uh, I have two different versions. This is a slightly longer version, and this is a slightly shorter version. I'll link these down below for you guys as well. Um, and these socks have been amazing. I've worn these and these are so really good at keeping um, your foot drier. Now you don't feel you know, completely dry, of course, but um, it keeps from you know high abrasion and stuff like that in your foot when you're wearing these in the wet. Um, so it really cuts down on the friction and stuff like that. And it also allows you to dry quickly and to shed some of that water. And they're also just a really durable, good sock. And I've worn these for several races and there's like zero signs of um, anything coming through or them breaking down at all. They've held up extremely well. Um, so there's a really great sock overall for obstacle course racing or trail running or just really anything in general. So that's some of the features of this shoes, the Solomon 3 and really continuing on to the 4. 
And if you guys want to check these out, please do, and uh, I think they're a great shoe. So what can we say about the Solomon Speed Cross? Well, the 3 was a great shoe, and the 4 is even better in a lot of ways. But like any shoe, it's not without some degree of compromise. So the shoe really excels in terms of having you know protection, having a thick heel you know, for really cushioning impacts, being a very well-built shoe, and being really excellent in that muddy, rocky environment. Now what it's not as good at is that it doesn't drain super well. Um, there is a little bit of lateral flex there and roll in the shoe, more so than like a very minimal shoe. And also it's not gonna be good for like the road and that kind of stuff, of course. This shoe is meant to be, you know, out in the middle of the wilderness, out in the rocks, out in the mud and that kind of stuff. So it's not made for that kind of an environment. If you do want more of a minimal shoe, Solomon does make a shoe with a four millimeter drop called the S-Lab Sense. It's really more for people who are really advanced, have a very, you know, solid gait and, you know, um, a really good form and that kind of stuff. So you guys can check that out in the links as well if you want. Hope help you guys a little bit to decide what it is, what kind of shoe that you want, whether or not the Speed Cross is the right shoe for you, or maybe I pointed you in a you know a different direction. And hope to give you some insight into what it is that you're looking for in a shoe. If you guys do have any cool like also course racing picks or other picks, please tag Better Life Reviews uh, at Better Life Reviews in those, and I'd love to check them out. And hope you guys will stop back by clicking the subscribe button and also hitting that bell as well to get notified of future videos. I hope to see you soon.